All right, everyone. Well, here we are Monday morning back in the saddle. Hopefully you guys had a good day. Today was a little rough for me. I thought this was going to be a red day recap. First trade of the day in the red. Second trade of the day, deeper red. Third trade of the day, a little further red. So I went into the red. Now, the good news today is that I did not hit my max loss. And my losses were actually progressively smaller as I went down, which for many of you, you kind of know the routine. You have one loss and the next thing you know, it capitulates where the second loss is twice as big. The third loss is even bigger. And now you're full on spiraling, digging the hole super deep. That's not what happened today. So what happened today for me, and actually I'll pull up my whiteboard here so I can show you kind of what the equity curve looked like. So what happened today was um, the first trade right at 7 a.m. went into the red. Second trade about matched the first one. And then third trade was a small loser. So I dropped myself down to uh, minus $1,900 approximately, which, you know, obviously is, is a red day um, at that point, but not by any means the end of the world. So from this point here, I had to make a recovery. And this is the way I approached it. I knew that I had, you know, there was a chance that I would have a red day at some point this week. There still is just because, you know, I've had a long green streak. So, you know, those only last so long. Uh, my first trades were on serve SERV. So let's actually start the day with that. We'll look at Mira um, and a couple others in a second, but serve was straight off the watch list from yesterday. Okay. So my watch list yesterday, what did I say? Those of you guys that tuned in for it, uh, I said I would be watching serve for a break through um, yesterday's pivot. Now, let's see. Sorry, my sometimes my computer runs a little bit slow and I'm running um, the screen recorder and everything else. So let's go back to full screen. All right. So yesterday, uh, after hours on Friday, serve had a little bit of resistance up around. I, I guess it was like 971. Um and let me just see, why is this running so darn slow? I'm going to, I'm going to close some stuff down here. I'm going to close thinkorswim. I think thinkorswim is slowing me down. All right. So we'll see if it runs better after that. And I'm actually going to close this slide deck also. All right. So, right. So we're already on serve. So we're, we'll go. So, so yeah, the five minute chart here on serve, um, so yesterday when I did my um, game plan for the week ahead, I said I'd be watching serve and that it seemed like it had some support down here around um, kind of this, let's see, level down in here around seven, but then there was also some support uh, a little bit higher up, you know, maybe, maybe kind of around 850. So sort of a level I would watch. So what ends up happening is 4 a.m., boom, this thing rips up to 11, pulls back, goes up to 12, pulls back, hits a high of 13. And then right up there at 13 came up an 80,000 share seller. So pretty big seller sitting at 13, and that was a wall that sat there all morning. So, you know, what I ended up doing on this um, was coming into 7 a.m., I still thought this was going to work because this was the number one leading percentage gainer. We still had the news from Friday, so I thought this is going to probably work. So what I did on my first trade was um, right here coming into 7 a.m., it dips down, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a dip trade on this, and let's see if we get a rip back up. So first trade, stop out. It goes lower. And then it goes a little bit lower, and I tried to do another dip trade where I got in kind of in this area, and I was looking for that squeeze back up, and it stops me out a second time. So after that, I was like, all right, two losses on serve. You know what? I'm down 1500 bucks on this stock or whatever it was. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I want to push it. So I lost about $700, $800 on each of those trades. So trade one, trade two, and I just kind of recognize, you know what? High volume red candles. I, I was hoping for that dip and rip squeeze, but you're trading against the trend. This is the backside of the move. MACD has crossed over. You, you probably shouldn't have taken these trades at all. So, all right, you dug yourself a hole. You're going to have to recover from it. Now, I ended up recovering um, and actually making $3,000 on uh, serve from the low back up to the high. And I'll show you my PL in a second. And that was um, right here as we curled back up. 
We came back up to 1250. We broke through that seller at 13 and we squeezed up to almost $14 a share. So we got a nice move right here, which was great to see. Um, we also got a trade. Where was it? Um, there was another trade. Oh, there was a small trade right here on this break of VWAP, but that didn't hold. So serve was a little bit tricky this morning. Uh, and unfortunately, first trade of the day, dug myself a hole. Okay, so then second trade of the day. So now let me show you the PL. So I'm sitting at $3,735.59. Not bad. Green days are good. It's not a home run green day, um, but it's not bad. Now, what's interesting about today is I actually got above my daily goal of 5,000 and I dropped back down. And like I said, as per the rules that I laid out for you yesterday, I hit one of the triggers where I had to walk away. I gave back almost 50% of my profit. I was up over $6,000. And then in one trade, I lost almost three grand and dropped myself back to 3,700. And I said, that's it. I got to walk. I've given back nearly 50% of my profit and I cannot take another trade. I have to walk away right now. And you know what? Considering the fact that I started the day going red 1900, yes, obviously it was nice when I hit that high of 6,500 or whatever it was up here. But, you know, this is this is trading, easy come, easy go. So finishing here at $3.7,000, which is still a great day. Maintaining the streak, staying green, staying on track for a $100,000 a month here for July. So, you know, yeah, it would have been would have been great if I'd finished at 6,000 and we'll talk about that final trade that knocked me back down, but nonetheless, I'm still in much better place. Well, first of all, much better place than I was when I first woke up this morning, $3,700, and much better place than I was when I hit my lows down here. So let's talk about the recovery. All right, so for those of you who have um, experienced uh, the red days recently, I know what it's like to be in the red, even though today I'm not closing red, I still had a period of time today where I was in the red, and I had to dig my way out with focus, staying calm, cool, and collected. And I am fortunate that I was able to do that. So if we go all the way back to this morning, lots of trades today. Um, so serve, those are my first couple trades. And then I took a trade on MLGO. And you know, it's funny I traded it because I said yesterday that, you know, I was like, in my recap, I was like, I don't know about MLGO. Yes, it's up, but I really don't think it's gonna work that well. Fortunately, I only lost $243 on it, but where I got in it was um, right here as it was breaking through this flat top. And I don't, you know, I don't have a major problem with the setup. You do have high volume red candles, uh, but the green volume was higher in total. So generally there was decent buying volume. I think it made sense to take that trade. I think it had the potential to move higher and it just didn't. And I stopped out and I took the loss on it. So $253 or $43, whatever it is, that's a small loss. I can handle it, but I was already in the red. So that just added a little bit more loss. Next trade was CYN. Now CYN, you can see I'm up $206 on. So I finally hit my first winner of the day, but it's only a $200 winner. So this can be a little bit defeating because you're like, I've taken a couple steps down. Now I finally get a winner and it's tiny. All right, so CYN hits my scanner. It popped up with news at 7 a.m. And I jumped in it with a thousand shares at 675. It ends up going up to seven and hitting a high here of 725. Pops to 710, drops down. I end up taking the profit at seven. And it really wasn't a very significant trade. I'm glad I didn't get back into it. Once I kind of read the headline, I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure this is really going to work. But initially, what I saw was the stock is moving quickly. It's got a low float. It's a somewhat recent reverse split with room to the 200 moving average. That's the right setup in a lot of ways. So that's why I started to feel like maybe this was going to work, but but then it didn't. Uh, so then next trade is HEPA, H-E-P-A. So you'll see on HEPA, I'm up uh, $247. You know, look, it's, it's nothing exciting. Um, this stock also ended up doing a round trip. So very small winner on it. It has news, it pops up, it dips down. Um, so I took a trade right in this area here. Again, nothing to be that excited about. The trade didn't work well. I just, I made small profit, but I could have easily lost a little bit on it. 
And then after that, my next trade was on Mira. M-I-R-I. -I. So this is the stock that went up 200 and oh my gosh, it's it's back up now. I didn't even realize that. Uh, so right now it's actually up 222%. So uh, this is the one that made the big move today, um, which is you know great to see that it's back at the high. Um, let's see. So anyway, so, so anyways, uh where did i get in so my first trade on this was way back this morning at uh let's see 90 cents okay so i jumped in pretty fast right here when it started popping up and i don't usually like to trade stocks below a dollar however this was moving fast and i thought it had the potential to become the number one leading gapper so when this thing started to squeeze i was like all right we're moving we've got news pharmaceutical company i'm gonna jump on so I jumped in at 90 cents and I bought 7,500 shares. Now, again, as per sort of share size, th that's a little more than 5,000, but it's also a cheaper stock. So not too worried about that. So, but anyways, it drops down and I actually lost. I was in at 90 cents and I stopped out at like 82 cents. So I actually lost about four or five, six, almost $600 on that. So now I have two small winners here. And then I dip back down to a new low of day and I'm down. That's when I guess I was actually down 1900. It was kind of like right about here. So, cause I was down 600 on that. So I had $400 a profit then. So this must've been my 16, 17 anyways, minus 1900 right here. So now I'm thinking, all right, I'm moving in the wrong direction. This is really, this is not a great situation here. I got to keep the leash tight if there's, an, but at the same time, it was only 8 AM. It was still really early. So, or seven, it was, what was this? Seven, yeah, it was about 8 a.m. So anyways, it curls back up and I got back in right here. I got back in with 7,500 shares. It breaks a dollar and I add 5,000 shares at a dollar five. So now I've got 12,500 shares. And I am taking a little bit more risk on this, but now we're holding and it's the leading gapper. And this thing squeezes up to a dollar 30. So just like that, I swing from red on that stock to green on that stock. And I made about $1,000 on that trade. So now, boom, I'm back up to here down about you know $900, something like that, right? So making some progress. I'm like, great, this is exactly what I needed. It pulls back, it does a little dip, and then it comes back up here. I take another trade right in this area, looking for the cup and handle formation. It didn't break, but then I get back in up around 44, and let's see, um, it was, where was the high? Um, the high was 43, right? So actually I got back in, it must've been right about here. Anyways, um, so I ended up making my way up to uh, $1,900 on this stock. So I got a couple more trades on it, got myself into the green uh, pretty nicely here. You know, again, like 1900 bucks one nineteen hundred dollars in the green and i guess i had a couple other um i had i had another trade on serve so now we'll switch over to serve um which i was initially red on by 1500 and i'm now green on by 1500 so i had a three thousand dollar swing from red to green so on this one um this morning i just felt like there was a really intense amount of selling through this area but I got a little squeeze right here, consolidation under VWAP, and I took that trade at 11.24, and it pops up to 11.60. About 30 cents a share, not bad, made I think $600, $700 on that. So cut my loss on the stock in half. It comes back up at the open, I wasn't sure it was gonna work, sells off, comes back up, comes back up again, comes up to 13, we've got that 80,000 share seller. And as I watched it thin out on the tape and go 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, et cetera, I jumped in right there. Got a 6,000 share position and it rips up to 1360 and I'm taking my profit as it goes. And that put me up 1500 bucks on serve. So now I'm up 3,700 on the day, almost exactly. This is where I sit on the day. You can see I'm down $12 on CMAX, but then CMAX comes up. So this was the last stock I traded. So I'm at now, I'll just erase this. I'll just say 3,700 on the day right here. So got myself, so from red to green, and this is where I sat. And right there, I was coming up to 10 a.m. Or, or so, and I was like, all right, look, this is a green day, a solid green day. You recouped your losses, 
can't really complain. It's a $5,000 swing, but then CMAX pops up. I trade CMAX and I make about just under $3,000 on it. And for a moment, it was the stock I was up the very most on. So what happened with CMAX was it halted up once, halted up a second time, opened, dipped, popped, dipped, popped, dipped, and then it curled right here. So I didn't take my, I didn't even break the ice with my first trade on CMAX until uh, $3.45, which was, let's see, it was right around uh, here, taking that break as it started to pull away. So first trade, I got in at 343 for the break of 350. And it hits a high, as you could see here, of 365. I take my profit and get out. I'm up like $400 on the first trade. It pulls back, and when it comes back up, I got back in right here, and we get this squeeze up to four, and I stepped up. I si started sizing up. I was like, okay, here we go. Got myself to up uh, 4,000 on the day, and then 4,500 on the day. It pulls back, squeezes through here. I'm up 5,000 on the day, 5,500, 6,000 on the day. It pulls back, it comes back up here. I bought 6,000 shares for the squeeze through five, looking for 550, and it dumps all the way down to 450. Pour gas, poured uh, water on the fire. Um, all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just lost 50 cents on 3,000 shares. Three grand gone in one trade. So made my way up to 6,500 and then took that 6,000 share position and boom, right back to here. But of course, you do have to be aware of the fact that I traded all the way up, so I incurred commissions. So, you know, my commissions as the day go on, we'll do that in a different color here. You know, the, the commissions are kind of like this. It's just an increasing number. So if I'd walked away right here, my commissions would have been, you know, whatever. And then by this point, the commissions are that much higher. So although I'm back to where I was before, net, I'm a little bit lower because of fees and commissions. So the commissions don't go down as you keep trading. The longer you trade into the day, the more the fees and commissions will add up. And so I, I, I started to push it here because all of a sudden I started to pull away and I was seeing some progress and I was like, all right, here we go. Uh, and, you know, I, I think on another day that would have worked just fine. It just ha so happened that CMAX ran into um, some resistance there. And so I had to follow the rules and walk away. And you know what? Walking away with 3,700 bucks is not too hard because it's a solid green day. I can feel good about that. I'm, you know, I'm like I said, I'm still on track for crossing $100,000 for the month of July, which is, you know, kind of a, it's a goal that I have. And I know that I can do it as long as I keep my head in the game and I stay focused. I'm already at um, 86,000 right now. So, you know, this puts me up over around 90,000, $10,000 to go. Really, all I have to do is maintain an average of a couple thousand, 1,500 a day, 2,000 a day, and I'm going to cross that. I don't need to be swinging for home runs. I don't need to take a lot of risk. Now, granted, if I'm up 6,000 on the day and I've got a pretty big cushion, I could afford to take a little risk. And look, if this thing had squeezed up to 525, 550, we'd be on a $10,000 green day. So it didn't, I had to stop out. It's still a $3,700 green day. I'm still on track, still doing the right thing. And I had the chance to have a $10,000 day. So, and all of that was off of initially, you know, being red 2000, almost 2000. So I, I'm pleased with the recovery today. I was disappointed that serve wasn't easier to trade. There was just so much selling on it. It was unbelievable. Just constant selling. I also saw MEIP hit the scanners. Uh, I noted that this one um, is easy to borrow at light speed. So easy to borrow there. Um, didn't end up taking any trades on it, but it, it is up 25% right now. And let's take a look at um, MIRA, Mira. So Mira uh, let's see, we halted up twice now in a row. So this is always carries a little bit more risk. We are showing a, a gap up on resumption of 241. So 241 resumption, the halt time was 11 and six, uh, 1106 and 11 seconds. So resumption should be in about 40 seconds. Um, so we'll watch, we'll watch resumption. It looks like it's actually a 10 minute long halt. Um, so we're on a long halt here because of the bigger gap. 244. So, you know, you look at a chart like this and something to be aware of. On the one hand, you've got a lot of room for a move higher. Like this could get exciting. Uh, of course, on the other hand, depending on where you sit on the day, you may not be able to afford the risk of, look, any trade you take, you have the risk of it going the wrong way. 
So I do something like this by 5,000 shares and let's say it opens and instantly halts down and then it gaps lower. I could lose, you know, 2,500 bucks. And then just like that, I'm back to flat on the day. And, and you think I should have walked away. I should have walked away. Rather than thinking in hindsight, I should have walked away. I should have walked away. I walk away, you know, when it's right. And I try to at least. So right there, if this false halts, if this false halted, that would be the only scenario. So that's 100,000 shares on the ask right there is a, is a quick false halt. So do you see how I bought right there? Quick little false halt. I actually shouldn't have taken that trade at all. But I'll just sell um, sell this up here. I only bought 250 shares. Really demonstration purpose only. The, the only problem with this um, trade is that um, the position size was, uh, was a little small, I guess. And what's worse is that uh, so 250 shares, so it doesn't matter. But what's worse is that I got some slippage. So that slippage is actually notable because, so now we're coming back to 35 and, and halted. We're going to halt down, it looks like. So whatever. So I'll lose a little bit on 250 shares. Doesn't matter. The The point here is, number one, the, the only spot to consider is when you have a false halt. Now, if I had actually gotten filled where I should have gotten filled on that, which is as soon as it thinned out at 35, I could have taken profit at 50. And that's 15 cents of profit. Instead, even though I have a high speed uh, broker, I got slippage. So I pressed the buy button and for whatever reason, I filled just, just after that pop. I thought I was gonna fill as the pop was happening, but I filled just after it. So. That's just bad luck. But that's also one of the reasons I keep my hotkey with small share size. That way, I don't do that with 10,000 shares because then all of a sudden you've got a lot of a lot of risk. So the, re the way that I'm able to sort of control my orders um, typically is I'll actually enter the order right here. So I'll enter the order and I'll put it at like, you know, 40 and then I'm clicking the buy button and I'm not going to fill really high because I'm managing my risk by keeping my um, keeping my limit right here. When you press the hotkey shift one, unfortunately, when you press the hotkey, you're not able, your hotkey is 10 cents above the ask. So it, when the current market, you know, opens, it's 10 cents above that price. So that's when, it, you know, you could all of a sudden fill at 50 or 60 because that's the way the hotkeys work. Now, the fact that showing a 250 resumption right here would be gapping up after a halt down that's um that's would be very bullish but in any case i'll just unwind this position and if i make or lose 20 30 bucks whatever doesn't doesn't matter so actually um sorry i guess i have um i've got 125 shares that i'm holding so holding 125 shares of this um so yeah so that's where i sit on it it looks like i get i did sell half um at 58 i sold half at 258 i didn't it's kind of like ha only half focused on that. So anyways, so that's what I'm sitting with right there. Um, and interesting price action on Mira. I hope it goes higher, but you know, for me, I don't have the risk tolerance to take like real positions on it, 5,000, 10,000 shares, because the risk is just too high. But the false halt, you know, if I had been still kind of in the space of like active trading and I had my orders all queued up, that could have been a spot for a nice little scalp. It just shows, you know, when when you're really able to focus, you're going to do a lot better than when you're, you know, doing something like a recap and also kind of half trading. It's not a great spot for uh, getting the most out of your skill. Okay, so so anyway, so that's Mira, um, and then Cmax again. I mean, it's just kind of interesting. This one it makes this huge move from a dollar fifty all the way up to five. This was a huge percentage gain. Uh, let's see, we were at one point. Let me just grab that uh, 225% on the day, 230%. So really big move. And it's kind of a bummer that it, I, I just screwed up my trade on that. And, and now I'm red on the stock because I had some nice profit and I, I just screwed it up. Mira now showing a 275 resumption. So, you know, you may have some uh, shorts that are going to get squeezed out on this. Um, 
I guess we'll see what happens. But good luck for those of you guys that traded it. As always, I think the front side and the beginning of the move is usually the cleanest. As we start to go higher, it's often on lighter volume. So liquidity is not as good. It would be harder to take big, big size if you, even if you wanted to because there's just not the volume. But good job for those of you guys that managed your risk, made your way to a green day, and I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow as always. So hope you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hope you hit that thumbs up. And if you want to do a two-week trial at Warrior Trading, there'll be a link posted to the comments and linked in the description so you can check that out. Thanks as always for tuning in. I'll see you guys back at it tomorrow morning.